Hello my friends and welcome to our brand new playthrough series of Distant Worlds. This time around we're going to be backing up to basics and we're going to be playing with Distant Worlds Extended Universe by Harry78. Uh, we're not going to do a bacon mod or anything like that this time around. We're going to go back to basics basically, if that makes any sense. So what are we going to do this time? Well, we're going to do pretty much the polar opposite of what we did in the bacon mod series. So we're going to start a new game and we're going to be a standard empire. And this time around, I'm going to go with an irregular galaxy. So stars are just going to be haphazardly strewn around. They're not going to be in any kind of spiral or a ring or anything like that. And instead of 2,000 stars, we're going to go with 100 stars in a 4x4 four four sector. This is a super interesting setup, let me tell you. Um, I've tried to start this type of setup with... Uh, without the pre-warp and it is absolutely insanely tough just resource wise because uh, basically I'm starting with 10 empires on here uh, myself and nine others and to try and find stuff like chromium and polymer if it isn't immediately in your area you're in trouble uh, basically you can't get much done and uh, you just end up getting stomped um, so we're going to go with a pre-warp start for this one. That way we sort of get every most of what we need in our home system most of the time when I was testing this. So we'll see how that works out. But we're going to start with pre-warp. Uh, we're going to be beelining the warp drives as soon as possible. So we, uh, we'll be uh, working with that. All right, so what else we got? We got pre-warp, we're going to be unstable. Uh, we're going to go with very hard. I think that was the same settings as a bacon mod. Uh, we're going to go with just an expensive, uh, sort of middle of the road to expensive uh, tech tree. Many space creatures, and we'll leave the pirates the way we had them in the last game as well. Normal and weak, and they're going to be average, and they won't respawn once we get rid of them. All right, so we're going to keep this the same as well. Colony prevalence and independent life uh, as scarce and rare. So there's not going to be too many independents out there. And we'll just uh, do whatever they suggest with that. I don't really go outside of the, the suggested on this. Uh, colonization range is kind of interesting. I'm going to set that to one sector. And we're going to be the Tekans. We're going to be tiny Tekans. This is going to be interesting as well. Uh, these guys actually wouldn't be badly suited to the bacon mod. I was, I was thinking of this when I was testing my games. And uh, yeah, because they have smaller ship sizes, they would actually react to the, uh, the gravity walls a bit better. But we're not going to have that in this game, so uh, we'll worry about that. We'll look at the race a bit more once we get into the game. And we are going to be the Montecan Empire. And we're going to start anywhere in the galaxy, and are going to, we're going to have a normal home system, nothing overly excellent or anything like that, so it'll be sort of a middle-of-the-road quality and everything. Uh, Pre-warp again, and our government will be Mercantile Guild. We'll look at that more when, once we get into the game. And we're going to have 10 of us on these 100 stars. So there's 9 other empires, and myself make 10. So everybody's starting in pre-warp, uh, just random locations. Uh, the, everybody's home systems are going to be the same. And we're not going to worry about the Shakhtari storylines for this. Uh, we'll have everything else enabled. And once again, we're going with the sandbox. 100%. We have to achieve 100% of everything, which means that we have to kill everybody. So let's start the game and see how long this actually takes to generate, which isn't long. <laughs> 100 stars doesn't take long at all. And we'll see what we get. Any second now. And here we are. All right, so we are the Montecan Empire. We are the ruler of the Tekans, and we have a mercantile guild as our government, and we have one colony and one system. And we are a standard empire in the Age of Shadows. Pirate smugglers and mercenaries rule the galaxy. Your empire is largely undeveloped with no space technology. Before you can take to the stars, you must first research critical technologies like hyperdrives and colonization. Meanwhile, pirates and other, others retain these key technologies and thus uh, dominate galactic affairs. As a fledgling stellar empire, you must develop the technologies you need while manipulating pirates and smugglers to work for you. All right, so I'm not going to have any stupid uh, rules like not trading with pirates or anything like that. Uh, you basically can't play that way in a pre-warp game anyway. So uh, we're going to be uh, paying them off for protection, all that kind of good stuff. So I won't have that kind of restriction on myself in this game. So we're going to hit pause and see what we're starting with we got a couple of ruins and not very many planets what do we got in here six 
planets and one moon. We got to get out of here in a hurry. And what's around us? Okay, so we have a one one sector colonization range. So there's quite a few stars within our range. So that's not bad. Fortunately, there's nine other empires out here. So things are going to get very crowded very quick. And depending on how things spawn, there might be a war within the first like two minutes of the game. Uh, we're the only ones in here. I've actually spawned uh, with another empire in one of my test games. So that's instant war when that happens. So we'll see how that works out. All right, so here's our home world, and we will just do a quick rename of a couple things. I'm just going to pop into the editor here, and I'm going to double click on our star, and this is going to be Montica Minor. Yeah, everything's going to have a tiny theme to it, so we'll go with Montica Minor. I'm not even sure what I'm calling this series yet. Maybe Tiny Tekans or something like that. We'll figure that out as we go. Okay, so, and we will also rename our homeworld to be Montica Prime. And first thing I'll do is zero the taxes while we're in here. And I'm just noticing we do not have a troop on the ground, so I like to get at least one troop on the ground. And that way any pirate raids or anything will generally get held off with uh, that one troop and uh, help from our population. All right, so before we get going too far, let's have a look at our race, the Tekans. And I did not start my clock. Where is my clock? I've lost my clock. Let me get my clock up so I don't overrun this episode again. Okay, so Tekans are small, furry, rodent-like race. Uh, Tekans see no value in, wa uh, in washing regularly and thus tend to smell, so we stink. <laughs> Uh, they take special interest in hoarding all kinds of mechanical junk, disassembling and repairing items that they collect. Tekans have a very little technology that is truly original, but they can occasionally progress to the point of being spacefaring, which is what we're going to go for. Tekans are born traders, profiting, uh, profitabil uh, profit, profit, profitably, profitably selling. Oh, okay, <laughs> their wares and. Uh, far and wide. They are also excellent miners, uh, rapidly exploiting any natural resource they discover. Despite being fairly insular, they are very peaceful and make a loyal and make very loyal allies should you wish to befriend them. Tekans are semi-nomadic. Some live in permanent settlements, may prefer to live in temporary camps. Okay. The nomadic uh, Tekan tribe are obsessed with hunting the Bakdur, also known as sand slug. Okay, so a little background on them. Uh, default reproduction 19. We're extremely passive, reckless, friendly, stupid, and dependable. Uh, we're industrious miners, faster miner 30%. Natural merchants, colony income plus 20%. So Tekans are always good on money, so I'm expecting to make a bit in this playthrough. Uh, bonus resources, silicon development bonus 5%, low colonies with access, and Danthafur plus 5% income bonus. So we want to get some Danthafur. And I'm just looking at our home colony. There's only silicon on it at the moment. And hopefully we'll have some Danthafur spawn here. It happened in the last, uh, in one of my test games, so and that really helped out. Uh, victory races or victory uh, conditions uh, have the highest private revenue in the galaxy or in the most trade and income in the galaxy start the fewest wars so we're not even going to worry about this we're we're going to be actually we'll probably be declared on a lot so we might actually be able to satisfy that I don't know and destroy the most sand slugs okay uh, special government we'll look at that in a minute is mercantile guild and we don't have any special technologies or disallowed we have smaller military ships by minus 20 percent and that's what i was saying this might be this might be a good race for the bacon mod with the gravity wells uh, our civilian ships are 20 percent larger which means that we can carry more stuff around faster construction speed plus 40 percent nice higher trade income and higher migration rates by 20 percent as well so they do very well in population. So I'm hoping I see some good numbers here. 13%, that was before we actually dropped to zero. So hopefully we can get a good 20% growth out of this and get grown up really quick. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, just having a quick look here. I'm hoping there's, yeah, there it is there. There's a continental planet which should have all our chromium and polymer and, and all the other good stuff that we're gonna need. 
So I'm hoping we have everything in here. We're pretty lean on planets in this particular system. Is there any asteroid fields? There's one where the slugs are right here. So there might be some resources there as well. Okay, so I'm not going to look it through here too much, but uh, yeah, we got next to nothing right now. We have silicon. It's the only, <laughs> the only resource we have. All right, so um, next thing I'm going to come into the policy screen and do my usual. Just slip down to boarding and capture, and we're going to go always capture. We're going to tick this off for the moment so we don't upgrade any captured ships to our lesser designs. So I'll apply that policy. And we'll see what our leaders are like here. Okay, we have a diplomat. And calling happiness plus eight, income plus 5%, uh, diplomacy plus 12, and civilian ship plus 2%. We have a colony governor. We don't know really know what he's about. We'll have to come back and look at him in a minute. And we have an intelligence agent, a psyops guy who we will put on counterintelligence for the moment. And we'll have a quick look at our government. All right, so we have a uh, minus 10% maintenance cost. Excellent. We have plus 30% colony income. And we take a bit of a hit at troop recruitment. So we're a bit slower to recruit our troops, but that's fine. And everything else is kind of normal. And we start with absolutely nothing. As we can see, zeros everywhere. All right, and science. Let's see what we're up to in science. Uh, what are we researching right now? Enhanced missiles. I still like my armor first. Just so we're not so vulnerable. And energy collection, I tend to hold off on that for a bit. just so we can get shields first. I generally go shields, then ship construction, or space construction. And then go into warp field precursors once you get that unlocked. And we have to go unlock that at uh, at an event. So. All right, so we'll take that off. We don't want to get that first. We want to make sure our happiness is tuned up first thing. And then we'll get the transport systems. Um, I usually click this as well right away, but I'm going to hold off. Uh, I get the feeling we might actually, by the time we get to this, we might actually... Uh, have most of the galaxy explored at that point. So I might not even need to worry about that. We can go on and get something else. And back here we have 243k of research potential and absolutely no labs to go with it. So we'll have to get that tuned up. Okay, and then ship designs. I have, I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna select all these designs and I'm gonna do something that's probably gonna freak a lot of people out. I'm gonna delete all those. Bye. <laughs> Fear not, I'm not going to make this a ship design episode. I have got some designs already done. I uh, exported those from my last test game, so we're going to go with those. And there, boom, done. I'll just do a quick walkthrough of what we got here. We have a, a survey vessel, uh, a construction ship, one small spaceport, our orbital labs, which hold all our labs, and then our usual um, gas and mining stations and a bunch of uh, private sector stuff. Uh, I was going to uh, let's take these off though. I was going to do all these um, on screen, but I thought, you know what? For for the first episode, I don't want to turn it into a, a, a ship design episode. So we'll look at these designs in a bit. The only thing I really want to make note of here is uh, the fabricator, the construction ship. Is that I've put a, res prof a res uh, resource profile uh, sensor on it so that we can see what's on the planet before, if it's unexplored, then we can at least see what's on it before we uh, start throwing our mines down and everything. So that's the one adjustment I made. And uh, sector port, very bare bones. All these designs, I basically just satisfied whatever the warnings were, and pretty much that's it. So I've ripped all the labs off of here, or I didn't put any on. And there's no cargo because we're above a colony, so we share the, the planet uh, cargo capacity. So it's just very bare bones, three yards for construction, some uh, docking bays, and that's about it. And then our orbital labs, I'm actually gonna adjust this design a bit from my last playthrough because I had weapons 30, high tech 30, and then energy at 210. I'm gonna spike everything into the energy on this uh, playthrough, I think. So we're going to keep the energy labs, but we're going to get rid of the high tech and we're going to get rid of the weapons and we're going to add a few more energy labs. I'm just going to click category and name so things are sorted so I can find them. 
I'm going to bring that up to, where were we, 243? I'm going to bring it up to about 300. We might have to add one more if we end up getting a, a spike in uh, potential. And it's a weapons lab. I'm just going to change that to a energy lab. There, gets rid of that warning. So we're going to have energy of 300. So we're going to save that. And the rest of them, it's usual designs for the extractors, just bare bones, whatever the warnings did. I just satisfied that. Uh, with gas, I made sure I had lots of cargo, lots of uh, bays. And uh, that's about all. We'll look at these more when we go to retrofit them, I think. So that's about it for ship designs. All right. So let's uh, select our home world. And we're, I usually build the spaceport first, but I think because I want to get going on the science super quick here, we're going to build the orbital labs first. And then we'll build the uh, spaceport. And then we'll come in here and we will queue up two construction ships after that. Uh, build the spaceport first, or the construction ship can, can't uh, grab anything to build anything with. So always get the spaceport first. Unless they change that. I don't think they did. All right. So I think we're ready to get going. Can you believe it? First episode, I'm going to get things moving. There we go. All right. I guess we can speed things up a bit. And we should see some pirates along momentarily. And usually more than one. I've had one uh, test game I had. I had to pay like three pirates. Just to keep them from destroying my stuff. Okay, and the research station is just about done. And there we go. Research station constructed. Constructed uh, Constructing research station gives a huge bonus to our research efforts. Allowing us to achieve technology breakthroughs faster. A new scientist has also appeared. Excellent. Let's have a look at our scientist. Hey, he's demoralizing, but he's an ultra genius. Ugh. Okay, well, um, as long as he's on this station. Yeah, he's on the space station already. Okay, I'm going to rename that. That should be called Star Lab. Because that name is way too long. All right. And I will be renaming stuff again, like I did in the bacon episode, in the bacon playthrough. So I'm not going to do anything right away. Um, I, I'll be picking names out of the comments, is what I'll be doing again. Okay, so uh, the pirates have shown up. Greetings to our victims. You have noticed. You may have noticed we're about to attack you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of obvious. But for a small price of 236 credits, you thieving bastards, a month, we can uh, avoid this unnecessary violence. So I guess we'll just pay that because we have no choice. All right. And hopefully we'll go get rid of some space slugs for us. And spaceport is now constructed. Yeah, we have constructed a spaceport. A large orbital base serves as a shipyard, allowing us to build many different types of starships. The construction of our new spaceport has galvanized the resolve of our population, providing a short-term boost to our economy and also our science rate. Ah, 366. Oh. This will drop back down into the 200s. Uh, it's just, do I want to add like two more labs real quick? I got... Uh Construction ships in the queue right now. I'll wait till that first construction ship is almost done. Uh, technology should upgrade our spaceports, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So first thing I want to do now is get an exploration ship. Our surveyor. So I'm going to buy one of those. And carry on. Yeah, hopefully they get rid of those for us. We have avoided pirate raid on our homeworld, Montica Prime. In the past, there were rumors uh, of secret visits from star travelers, but recently these visitors in, from the stars have begun to appear openly. As we saw, they exploited money from us. Kill him, kill him. Come on, what am I paying you guys for? There we go. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> okay, starship constructed. That would be our explorer. And I just realized I have to go in here and unautomate everything. There we go. All the ships are now unautomated. So let's grab you. Where is our 
Okay, we have a bonus ship over here that's uh, it's just been abandoned. So we're going to come over and have a look at that. And anything on the way? Not really. So I'm guessing this is our fuel. I'll send our first construction ship there. And just have another quick look at science. It's actually climbing. Isn't that 366 before? With three, uh, hmm. How much longer do we have till this is done? Four unbuilt, so I need to make a decision now. I'm going to revise this. I'm just going to call it a revision A. And I'm going to put two more energy labs on it. Wow, maybe three more. Okay, good enough. And we'll go to the latest buildable so that doesn't show up again. And I am going to issue that retrofit order for Star Lab. And then I'm going to come in here and move that up. So once that construction ship is done, it'll do the upgrade for the energy labs. And there it is. So we'll select our construction ship, and I'm just going to go ahead and just build a, a gas mining station right there. Man, you guys suck at killing bugs. Oh my god. 43%. 29. Come on, what am I paying you for? Nothing, apparently. Okay. Another construction ship is done. Now, um, where is... There's another abandoned ship, usually by one of these ruins. Okay, and what's this? That's probably going to be Necrostone or something. So I'm going to get this construction ship to build a my, uh, mine here. You'll discover what that uh, ruin is. And then we'll go over and repair that ship. And then we'll discover that ruin as well. I'm hoping I have enough time for that. I should. I had one... Uh, Test, I played about three or four test games, and I had one test game. I actually was late getting the ruins, so I had to wait to actually start warp field precursors. I want to avoid that this time. Oh my god, what do you got for firepower? 20. And they gave up. How powerful are they? 10 ships, 499, wow. Wow. Okay. How's Homeworld looking as far as growth? 9%. Yeah. Oh, we finished shields already. Okay, calling happiness is up. Excellent. Man, I hope we have enough time here. Okay, here's the uh, Pyramid of, Le of Liana. Discover the period of uh, Pyramid of Liana, ancient rooms from lost uh, civilization, and we will investigate those. And we got some money. Excellent. I was just noticing we we're starting to get low. I'm kind of concerned that we don't have enough time to get over to that other ruin before we need to be there. Hopefully this won't take too long. We might be okay. I was wondering why shouldn't I just beeline right over there. Oh, they're back. Come back to kill some slugs for us. Uh, mining station is constructed. Good. And abandoned ship encountered. Good. <laughs> oh, man. So investigate the ship. Okay. And uh, we have investigated and abandoned frigate Deception of Liana at frozen G uh, gas giant uh, Dominic Gary and then Montica Miner System. So we'll go to the event. And we'll get you to go. Sit at home world. Is that going to go? This always barfs on me. Okay, there we go. Sometimes I have to issue that order twice. All right, so, um, yeah, come over here, move to, 
and we'll grab this construction ship and we'll get you to come over here and you should discover that ruin at the same time you should make it oh another pirate yay Oh, they're fighting each other? No, they're collaborating. Oh, no, they're not. All right, he's probably going to come after us next. Uh, leader has a new character trait of what? Tolerant. And you need to be Montezuma. He's going to get replaced real soon, so I'll just call him Montezuma. Yeah, all four of my, or four, three or four of my test games, this guy got replaced before he even broke out of pre-warp. So that was unfortunate. It might not happen, but we'll see. Um, so what was tolerant? Plus trade income, plus uh, diplomacy. All right, so... Um, Oh, I have to, hmm, I'm just kind of curious. Liana Pillagers is who we're paying. I'm just wondering what our, sh oh. Where's work field precursors? I can't steal work field precursors? I was able to last game. Maybe I have to unlock that rune before we do that. Okay, well, we'll put you back on counterintelligence for now. Once we unlock that rune, maybe it's because we can't uh, access that technology yet. 75% he's going to be late. Okay. Um, okay, have a look here. You have 60 firepower at 520 range. You've got missiles. 18, we have missiles as well. Uh, 200 shields, 300 shields. That's probably not going to go well. I don't think that's going to go well at all. Let's see what happens here. Uh, we're both traveling the same speed by the looks of it. You're going 25. You're going 23. I can actually outrun him at impulse. So that means he's coming straight for Homeworld. I have nothing there to protect myself. And we have... Oh, man. I'm ready for warp fields and I'm not there yet. Ugh. All right, start energy collection. We'll swap over to warp fields as soon as we get that tech. Um... I wonder if I should uh, design a quick uh, escort or something with some uh, rail guns on it. Just to scare him away. That might be an idea. So let's go in, go to state ships. And I guess we'll add new escort. And we'll go point blank on both of these. And do not invade. And, well, we have no armor or shield, so this should be interesting. Man, I'm not sure how this is going to work without armor and shields. So let's get a couple of reactors. And we'll name this a protector. And, okay, what do we need? We need a command center. We need some fuel storage. Um, don't know how much we need right now, though. I don't want to drain our reserves. So we won't worry about that too heavily. We'll put a few engines on it. A couple of directional uh, vectors. Yeah, ship must have weapons. Okay, we'll go with long range guns. Say five of them. And have in life. That's a base ship anyways. We'll tweak it out here a bit more. Uh, let's see, 14 is a bit slow. So let's add a couple more engines on it. 
So 86, we got 35. Okay, that should be fine. Still got a bit of room. How big can we build? I didn't really look to that. Ah, 184 is our ship size. So base size is 230, but we have minus 20%. So 184 is our biggest ship size. I'm thinking of put, putting bla uh, some blasters on here as well, just to make it a little more punchy. So we're at 128. We still got lots of room here. I want to keep our... Uh, our speed up as well and make it a little bit more maneuverable. Uh, we need having life again. So 33 firepower. Could put a seeking missile on it. Okay. And there's somebody out in the hallway making all kinds of noise. Hopefully I can get rid of that in editing. Um, I guess that's about the best we can do. Yeah, we're kind of topping out on power here. So I think we'll go with that. That's actually not a bad ship. And hopefully about three of these or six of these will be able to take care of that one that's coming at us. So let's save that and we'll leave that as automatic retrofit. Why not? I tend to have a bunch of these kicking around, so if I happen to miss retrofitting some, maybe they'll automatically get done. It, it's game to game whether that actually works as intended or not. Okay, so let's, uh, we got 22 grand, thank God. Can at least afford this stuff. A few freighters in the way here though. Well, we'll move all these to the top. tedious but we'll get her done there so once these are done these will slip in and hopefully we'll have that done before the, that ship gets there uh, military please and we'll just fleet all those up and no automation thank you oh stop all right so let that go Osalia discovered on Montica Prime. Excellent. Another resource. Oh, great. Another pirate. Er, oh, good, good, good. Uh, military ships con are constructed. Okay. Uh, that ship's much quicker. Not better, though. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, got killed in a hurry. And, oh, so much stuff happening all at once. Uh, Obelisk of Liana. We have discovered the Obelisk of Liana, ancient runes from a lost civilization. Investigate, and there are our warp fields. Okay. So it's given us the warp field technology, or the ability to research it anyways. So we're going to come off of that and get on that. And once you're done that, you can go back to energy collection. Uh, 348. So, yeah, that spiked quite nicely. So that should get our energy stuff done real quick. Now, what do we got going on here? Who is this? 10 ships, 600 firepower. Um... I guess we kind of want to save this, don't we? What is that resource? Oh, Emerus Crystal. What do we need that for? Is it something we need right away? Do I need to protect this Emerus Crystal? I don't know. It's nothing we need right away. Yeah, it's nothing we need right away. Might just raid it. Um, how close are we here? Still got one ship left to come. That, that thing still had a warp drive on it, apparently. 
Oh, they captured it. All right, I guess we'll go get get it back or get rid of it anyways. Oh, never mind. We'll stay here. I'm just going to slow this down a bit. Wow, we're not standing up at all with this. No shields or armor. There we go. Kaboom. Yeah, my private sector is running away. All right, go repair. If you can. And you can't. <laughs> Everybody's been badly damaged. And Montica Prime is under attack again. Oh my god. Oh man. Like I said, this small uh, galaxy is super, super tough. Who we got here now? Five ships, 300. Okay. Who are we paying again? These guys. Where are you? I need your help. Yeah, these aren't going to last at all. I might have no choice but to pay these things. Mm. I guess I don't really care too much about the private sector. They'll rebuild it all anyways and I'll get money for it. <laughs> kind of a bad thing to be doing. Yeah, just let them die. Yeah, I don't think that would win you any elections. All right, I guess we're going to have to do something here. Probably going to have to end up paying all three of these eventually anyway, so let's just do this. 225, I guess we'll take it. And we'll wait for the other one to attack if they're going to do so. Okay, so um, what are you doing? Oh, you got attacked. Uh, do you still have enough to build this? Or did you get, maybe you got started and got destroyed? Hang on, what do you got in your cargo hold? Nothing. Oh boy, all right, go repair. Oh, you're going to be forever. Be nice if they went and destroyed that. No, they're going to go come and destroy this instead. Okay, 8% towards warp fields. Year 2, I'm actually behind. I should have been earlier on this. I should have went out and explored that right away. Okay, so that's been destroyed. No longer being chased. Um, should I build another construction ship? What all is in here anyways? We got... Ah, yes, I should get a construction ship for this, if nothing else. Because if I don't get on here, the pirates will. So I guess we will build one more. Wasn't planning on it, but go for it. All right, so I think that's the end of the first episode. Um, we actually got playing. I actually took it off pause. So not bad. Um, yeah, it's hard to say what's going to be around us. This is going to get really crowded really fast. So it's definitely a challenge. So once again, I've probably bitten off more than I can chew, but yeah, you guys seem to enjoy watching me squirm, so why not? All right, so next episode, we should hit our warp field precursors and hopefully get out of here. Uh, I think if I'm out of here by about year three, I think we should be okay. But we'll find out when we get there. So hopefully you'll enjoy this new series, and thanks for tagging along, and we'll catch you next time.